What's up there guys, this is Chris from WebXon and in this tutorial I'm gonna be showing you how to make your own studio and also I'm gonna show you how to make a different kind of lights to use with the studio. It's just gonna be a basic thing to get you started and that's what I used and I kind of sometimes use it uh, right now as well so yeah so let's just get started uh, when you open up a new project you automatically get this side panel right here with project settings by default it is set to centimeters but we want to change that to millimeters and now let's create a cube and I'm gonna change the size to 200 or you can just type 2m because it will also recognize that like for example 1.5m is 150 centimeters and we also need the same here and now I'm gonna change the segments to 4, 3 and 3 alright now we're inside the cube and I want to see it in my frame so press H on your keyboard next what we need to do is make it editable by pressing C on your keyboard or you can press this button right here so press C on your keyboard it is editable um, select your live selection tool and polygon mode now by let's select our cube control A to select all of your polygons and we're gonna set the Y position to 50 so it's resting on our floor is it it's still not so I'm gonna move it just a bit up like that alright so now it's resting on our floor alright now let's select all of these sides right here don't select anything more than I'm selecting currently just select these the same size that I am and press delete select also this side right here press delete and now we need to press control and A and you can see that these are in blue color that means that their normals are not facing the correct position um, I'm not gonna get into that I'm just gonna simply tell you to right click select all of them control a right click and reverse normals all right and then just we need to put the cube into hypernerbs to do that uh, alt click on hypernerb icon right here and voila and let's uh, in, in hypernerbs or subdivision surface in subdivision render let's change that to 5 or 6 and that will basically make sure that our object here is smooth and there isn't any like chunks or anything like that alright so I'm gonna name the cube to let's say cage okay and now we need to create a new material for our cage and uh, uncheck specular right here go to illumination and model type from blend to rnar now let's go to color and i'm gonna uh, click here and i'm gonna set the this from 80 to 95 and that will give me almost white color click ok close that down i'm gonna rename this material to cage white and now I'm gonna drag that into onto our hypernerbs now I'm just gonna duplicate this by you can duplicate by simply clicking and holding control and dragging I'm gonna rename this to cage black so click again here set this value to 10 which is almost black as you can see click OK close that down and I'm gonna create another copy and name this gray click here and set this to 50 so that's in the middle okay and we have a very nice gray color alright now I'm gonna drag the cage black onto our hypernerbs and also cage gray and then I'm gonna drag the cage white all the way to the right side and also I'm gonna drag the black here in the middle alright so from here on now we're gonna work with the light I know this doesn't look like some professional studio kit or something like that but it will get you going so alright so here I'm gonna set a camera and also I'm gonna create a sphere 
move it up. Let's see if it's in a good position. I'm going to go, let's say it's about good. Right there. All right. So, and I'm going to also put this color on like that. And next, simply click on light. Let's move it up. Let's just say like so. And then here in general tab by the light, we can click this. No, actually this here by the color, this drop arrow and select use temperature. So what this does is a very cool feature of Cinema 4D where you can adjust the temperature of your light. You see, it gets like cold, like warm and stuff like that. It's a very cool feature. Um, so how was it to set it to default? Wait, was it that way? Yeah, so um, to set it to default, just like right click right there and there you go. That's the default. Also, we need to adjust the shadow. So currently it's set to none, but I'm going to set it to area. Area gives the best result, but at the same time it gives a slightly slower render time. But So if you're on a slower machine, I would suggest to use Shadow Map Soft. And let's go into details. And I'm going to change the area shape to disk. So currently the size is set to 20 centimeters, but I'm going to set that to 10 and 10. So it's kind of a little bit more closer to a light bulb. Also going to set the fall off to inverse square physically accurate. It will change your render speed. So yeah, if you ha if you're not on a very fast machine, I would suggest going with inverse square clamped. So basically what it does, it calculates the distance between uh, the object and light and based on that it sets the brightness and we can also change the light's position. So let's do it like that and you can see that by basically moving it up and down we're adjusting brightness. So if you're if you move it too close, you will see a huge exposure right there. So be careful with that. I'm going to leave it about right there or somewhere like that. But I'm going to move it to like, like, I don't know, like here. And let's see, how does it look? You can see that it gives us a lot of shadows, a very good uh, light on top and a very good seamless background right there. This is a very good light to use instead of using the default one. So I'm going to set uh, select the default one and I'm going to position it right at the same position right here. I'm going to turn this one off. We're going to see the difference. I'm going to set the shadows to, sh to area. So you can definitely see a difference right here. You can see that uh, the top of our object is not so bright. So I would definitely use this because it gives a lot, lot better result, at least in my... I'm also going to right click, go to Cinema 4D tags and use target. That's going to help us out in uh, future when using this light. So guys, I forgot to mention one thing here is basically we did set the target tag right here on our light and we're gonna uh, group this object so alt plus G I'm gonna name this object and now click on the target and target object and select the object group or you can just simply select the object but I like to put uh, everything in a group so that way if I have more objects it will follow all of them not like one specific object so yeah, if I'm gonna I'm gonna go out of the camera, and if I move the object, you can see that the light is following the object. So that's a very cool feature to have. All right, I'm gonna copy this, and instead of using the cage on our sphere, I'm gonna right click, name this uh, shiny. Oops, my bad. What did I just do? Shit. So let's copy that. Let's name this shiny and that's the same let's go to reflection and I'm gonna click here 
that's 100, all right. Texture, Fresnel, double click and click physical and use plexiglass. And let's close this down and use this for our sphere. All right, so now you can see a lot that this gives a lot better effect to our sphere. Um, and the shininess just changes everything right here. All right, so now let's click on our light. Uh, we're Cinema 4D Tax, Target, Light, and Coordinates, and let's set this to 90 degrees. All right, so here I'm gonna work with uh, different lights. So go to General, change it type from Omni to Spot. Um, go to Chords and set it to minus 90. That's better. And uh, I want to have a little bigger spread than this. I'm gonna also move it. Oh, that's actually good. Um, I'm also gonna change uh, the spread right here because it's very, very. It's focused only on our object right here, and I want it to spread a little bit more around. So to do that, go to details and change the outer angle to let's say 65. So that way we have a wider angle and it's covering more of an area. Mm, but I think I need a little bit more, so I'm gonna increase that to like maybe something like this. What if we move it up a bit? All right, well, it's something like this. And I'm gonna also change the contrast. So I'm gonna change that to minus 50. And what that does, as you can see, it smooths out the transitions from the light right here to the shadows right here. You can see a much, much smoother transition. And so this is what we currently have with these settings. I'm going to now focus on creating a light that is using a barn door attachment for your light. And that basically gives the light that sort of square look. So let's go back to Cinema 4D. Now let's go to general and change the type to square spot. And also let's go to details and lower the outer angle. And you can see that I can see the square right there already. So we can see the square right now. And uh, so I changed it. So this is a result of using outer angle of 58. And you can see that square looking light effect. All right, so next light that I'm going to focus on is most commonly used in uh, studio kits, and that is softbox. So go to general tab and change the type to area. So let's go to details and I'm going to change the contrast back to zero. And one of the things that I really like about lights and how they like turn out how they affect your objects is that reflection of it. So let's go into basically here and check show render and show in reflection. And we're gonna set the visibility multiplier to 400. All right, so let's change the area shape to rectangle, size to 50, 50, and uh, that's good. Well, again, it happened that I have to make sure that I don't move my camera around. Here you can see that nice reflection over a soft box and I, I also did use a protection tag for my camera which basically means that I can't move it around because I did move it a lot. I don't know why but yeah it just happened. So guys also you can obviously move the light around to have a different sort of effects. Oops I'm moving all the scene. Um, to have different sort of effects. So I'm gonna Click R to rotate it. I'm gonna move it down like that, and now I'm gonna go back to camera. So this isn't any professional studio set or anything like that. It's just a quick thing to get you started, and it did definitely help me out when I was starting out using Cinema 4D. And I sometimes still use this if I have to make a quick studio on the go. Um, because it's very easy to create. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe to me because I'm making more videos. And if you want this, uh, studio, I will put a link for the download in the description. Um, so if you want this studio set, uh, you can contact me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, 
uh, YouTube and by email and I will send you the download link. I want to say that this is my last video this year. I hope you all did have a very good year in 2014 and I hope you will have an even better year in 2015. I will see you guys in my next video. Please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or suggestions, please make sure you leave them down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.